Welcome back guys to yet another video and just like the title states this is my first time replacing a watch battery. Now I say first time I've actually replaced one in the past um, but it was an older watch where the back cover just kind of popped off my hand and you could swap out the battery no problem. This one though it has to screw off and I have never seen or interacted with or replaced a watch battery of this kind before so I figured We'll give it a shot instead of taking it somewhere. Um, started doing some research online, found out you can buy some tools yourself uh, to do it pretty cheap. I got this kit here off of uh, Amazon for about nine bucks. Um, maybe not 100% necessary. I think there is a way you can get this off. Maybe taking some, uh, sorry, taking some needle nose pliers, getting them in these little tanks here and turning them. But this watch is actually in pretty good shape and I don't want to risk any pliers slipping on the back of this watch. Um, I picked this watch up for about three bucks at a garage sale last summer and I like this watch. It actually looks pretty sweet. It's in great shape. I'm going to be hard pressed to get rid of it but I've seen these watches go for sale on eBay for as much as 30, 40 bucks uh, in pretty good condition so who knows. Maybe worst case scenario I decide not to keep it, make a couple bucks off of it and uh, be some beer money or some gas money. But uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Um, as you can see here, we have our fossil watch. It is indeed, I don't know if you can see that, very, very dead. No movement whatsoever from the second hand. And uh, yes, yeah, so we got our watch. We've got a repair kit here, which is supposed to come with a vise that holds the watch face in place. It's going to have a special tool that interlocks with this back case to pry it off. Um, I think there's some small screwdrivers and things like that. And then some gaskets um, to help seal up on that back cover as well. Not sure if I'm going to use those. Not sure what kind of quality they are. Um, but yeah, got all that for under nine bucks or so. So I, I honestly, I don't think that's a bad deal at all whatsoever. And if I come across more watches, maybe some family members have them laying around. They want to get them going again. Might be able to help them out. And then of course we have our watch batteries. Now to figure out what kind of batteries to get, I took the model number on the back here, which is an FS. Looks like 4487. Searched that online. Um, was able to actually find a manual on the Fossil website, which leads me to the correct replacement battery. And then, of course, was able to pick that up online. Um, you can't get watch batteries in a single pack without paying out the nose, so I ended up buying a 10 pack. I don't know if I'm ever going to have use for the other nine, but if I do, I got them. So. Let's go ahead and crack open this uh, service kit and see what we have to work with. All right, as you can see, my friends at uh, Ohuhu, oh, Ohuhu, uh, uh, hoo -hoo. anyway, um, they have provided me this carrying case. I'm going to go ahead and pull the case open, see what we got inside. So this is our tool that's going to open the watch backing. Uh, looks like you turn this dial and these little tangs go in and out. So this is like a spudging or like a prying tool. Probably wrong there. Don't quote me on that. This is our watch gaskets for the back cover. Nice little microfiber cloth. Wipe up any dirt and debris. Tweezers to get to the battery itself. Screwdriver, precision screwdriver, I should say. And then we got all kinds of goodies in here. The vise to hold the watch in place. Looks like another opening tool or brining tool. More screwdriver attachments. This looks like maybe some sort of protective cloth. And then of course, the user's manual. Okay, so taking a quick look at the uh, user manual, this is actually pretty uh, pretty expansive. It kind of covers everything. Here it has the contents, whatever I uh, mispronounced or misaddressed earlier. I'm not gonna go through them again, but there's everything that you get with the kit. And they actually give you step-by-step -step instructions. It's really straightforward. And in pretty well written English, I was not expecting for being so cheap um, 
decent quality like this and I'm actually at first impression I'm kind of impressed so they tell you how to do it on every you know single uh, various different kinds of watches or they use screws or a pop-off seal or something like I have where you have to use this tool and screw it off so if you get this kit it looks like it's kind of a one-size-fits-all for the most part um, you should be in pretty good hands so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get our watch mount in the vise um, these this bag here, which I thought was a cloth, is actually a protective film. I don't know if I'm going to bother. You can see mine's a little scratched up. We're just going to try to be super careful with it. Um, if it starts feeling like I'm not getting a good bite, and like I might slip and come off and scratch anything, then maybe I'll change my mind and go back to using that film. So first things first, let's go ahead and get this mounted up in the, in the uh, block. Okay, so you see we have some cutouts here for the dial and the various buttons. And that is just going to fit in there like a glove. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to seat this against this side because when you turn the wing nut here, it actually moves this side. So let's go ahead. I don't want to do it too tight, just nice and snug. You'll feel the resistance on this wing nut. And that's not going anywhere. Okay, so next step we have our watch opening tool here. And I want to try to get these tangs here kind of dialed in as much as I can so it looks like looks like about there let me double check here yeah that's feeling pretty good I've got it nice and snug in those holes let's go ahead and give it a very gentle turn Make sure I'm getting a little pressure inwards just so it doesn't slip. A little bit of uh, resistance there, but it is turning. You want to go nice and slow. Kind of just apply some steady torque on it. You don't want to just give it a you know, full throttle and risk slipping off the, uh, the watch face there. So. I think it's off enough. I should be able to get this by hand. And there it is. All right, guys, so I had to sit you down for this next step, but I've located our battery, which is right here, and it looks like it's underneath this little clip. Um, this is providing a decent amount of pressure to keep the battery in place. I was hoping maybe I could sneak it out this way without taking the clip off, but I don't see how this battery's gonna come out without causing any damage without releasing that clip. So it looks like on this side here, there's a little plastic tang and I can release it. I don't know, maybe you guys can see that, but there's a little black tang in, or a little tang there that goes over a little black piece of plastic. So I'm hoping if I just pry this out this way, I can kind of bend this up and out of the way. This does look like it's attached in one piece with this plate here. So I don't want to bend on it too much, but I should be able to get enough clearance to get this battery out. So let's give it a try. Covers release there, that metal tab there. So let's see if we can't try to weasel the battery out of here now. Alright, so I got the battery out. I don't know if that was 100% the right way to do it, but it's the only way I could see it coming out. So, whatever. We got it out. Everything's in one piece still. Nothing's broken yet. Knock on wood. But, um, for my research online, it looks like this took a SR920SW battery. And I am super thrilled to see this old battery. SR920SW. Just like the box that I have here with the many, many replacements. So, I'm going to go ahead and fish one of those batteries out and we'll see if we can get it rested in this new home. Okay, let's see what we can do about getting this new one settled in here. Off to an amazing start so far.
hardest part looks like it's just gonna be clearing this plastic piece here. And feel free to take your time with this step. Battery is rested down in its spot. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this clasp here locked back in place. So we'll make sure everything's seated in place. It looks like that metal tab there is locked into place and I'm hearing a, the ticking noise already, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and get this back cover on and see what we're looking at. Now, while the idea of replacing this rubber O-ring sounds nice while we're in here, um, I'm looking at this bag of replacement O-rings they gave me. And I'm sure I could find the right size, but I'm a little concerned the thickness looks a little thinner than the O-ring that's on here. So I think instead of messing with it and potentially compromising the uh, ability of this thing to seal, I'm just going to go ahead and reuse the old one for now and uh, hope for the best. We're going to go ahead and throw this cover on. Go ahead and start this by hand before I get the tool on there. And we're going to snug up those fingers nice and tight on the back of the case. And I'm just going to go ahead and snug this cover on with a decent amount of pressure. I don't want to like force this on. I'd say that feels pretty good right there. I'll just snug it one more time just to make sure it feels good. Yeah. Okay, so with that rear cover back in place, let's go ahead and get the watch out of this vise and see what we got. I'm hearing a ticking noise ever since I put that battery on, so I'm feeling real hopeful. And look at that. We got signs of life. That's cool. All right guys, so I had a chance to kind of play around with the watch. You can see I was able to set the date and the time there. It's about 10.37 now at night on May 5th. So yeah, everything was looking good there. Um, I'm gonna be brutally honest, it's been a long time since I've had an analog watch like this. I don't remember what those three dials in the back do offhand. I'm gonna have to do some research. I know this one's like a timer a chronograph. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's operating like it should, but I'm going to play around with this watch a little bit, see how those functions work. At the very least, the main uh, time telling and date functions are working great. And uh, yeah, this thing's ticking right along, so it's cool to see. If you have a nicer, fancier watch, I don't know how much you really want to try to attempt it yourself. It's maybe something I would leave for a... Uh, you know, a jeweler or a you know, place that works on a watch, like Watchsmith. Um, this is a, you know, secondhand fossil watch, probably 150, 200 bucks, brand new at Kohl's back in the day, maybe worth about 30, 40 bucks now. So I didn't feel too good. Plus, you know, it was lovingly used on the back here. I don't feel too bad about uh, tearing it apart and attempting this myself. So worst case scenario, like I said, I might wear this, maybe I can get a couple bucks out of it. Maybe someone in the family can get good use out of it, but, um, 
yeah, it's going to find a new home and it's going to get many years of good use, which is nice to see because this is actually in really good shape. So I would hate to have seen this thing gone to waste. So overall, I'm super happy with how this battery replacement went. It took me maybe 10 minutes or so with all the proper tools. I think this kit was worth every every penny spent for about nine to 10 bucks. And uh, definitely gonna come in use in the future if I ever come across more watches with dead batteries like this. So thank you so much for watching guys. Until next time, we'll see you later. Oh, real quick before I let you go guys. Um, couldn't help but notice this screwdriver is making a rather interesting noise as I was packing everything up. So I found out the cap comes off and there's a whole bunch of bits inside of there that you can use. So just words to the wise, you guys pick up a kit like this. All right, see ya.